what we endearly refer to as a new roads rule. Uh, it's really about trying to prevent the fragmentation of these forest blocks through uh, using a 2,000 foot road length that would include driveways. It requires a report to look at whether Act 250 is actually contributing to any adverse impacts on racial equity and diversity. It clarifies that projects will be of how projects will be evaluated under air pollution and water pollution criteria. It adds climate uh, change through transportation and our energy criteria to achieve, and to achieve greater resiliency to the impacts of climate change, looking at building and landscape design, and requires Act 250, uh, excuse me, ANR, to stand up a rivers permitting program to improve protections along the highest priority river corridors to ensure that we are providing greater uh, resiliency to the impacts of extreme weather events on our communities. There's support on our downtown areas by lifting jurisdiction in certain designations of, of growth areas, specifically the designated downtown development districts and neighborhood development areas. And there's support for working landscapes in recognition that our forest-based enterprises are actually experiencing those impacts of climate change and uh, in fact when where and when they need to do uh, access to uh, to their timber harvesting activities is having is being affected by uh, the impacts of climate change and so the components of this bill specifies greater flexibility regard regarding hours of operation shipping and receiving of forest products and the delivery of wood heating fuels during colder months uh, there's a public participation component to this bill, which uses a pre-application meeting to allow applicants and interested parties to get together and discuss the, their concerns and to uh, help reduce the points of conflict before the applications are, are finalized. It requires that hearings for major applications be held in the municipality where the project is located, unless parties agree to an alternative location reduces a step in the appeals process and maintains the current system of district coordinators and district commissions to process the lion's share of Act 250 projects that are classified as minor applications. This bill does create an enhanced independent natural resources board by creating an independent professional natural resources board that will hear major Act 250 applications, approve regional plans, and hear appeals regarding those municipal downtown designations. The makeup of this enhanced natural resources board includes three full-time members appointed in the manner of a superior judge to staggered four-year terms who must meet certain qualifications and can only be removed by cause. For a review of major projects, this NRB will include two regional district commissions from the region where the project will be located and will have full voting rights. The intent is to improve predictability, achieve consistency of decision making across the state, improve capacity in managing complex projects, and improve the transparency in decision making. There are streamlining components to this bill. Reduces, uh, the bill reduces overlapping with state permits by amending the statutory authority to allow uh, that the demonstration of compliance with state permits are a, a means of meeting the, the uh, relevant criteria. It applies a 90-day time frame for municipal response to the projects, and uh, those are related to the two criteria that involve municipalities. And uh, it allows for the denial of an application without prejudice if those applications are deemed incomplete. <clears throat> Uh, this, the sending of appeals for these NRB decisions, the natural resource uh, decisions, will go directly to the Superior Court, which under the current system involves the renew, uh, excuse me, the review of the issues all over again and a disregard of the prior district commission review. Thank you, Gary. Um, 
Uh, Carrie's taken leadership in our committee to, to develop this uh, white paper, and uh, it's going to be available. Carrie, is it going to be on, on our committee web? Um, so. Yes, hopefully today. Yeah, so, so um, all the diligent notes I've seen being taken here, um, compare them with, with that the white paper when it gets up on our web. Uh, thank you, Carrie, for that. Um, so at this moment, I want to share with you that but that was quite a while ago. 20, our committee um, started deliberations January 2019. And um, certainly the process started in 2017 with the commission group um, uh, being uh, set up. So how come? Well, how come is this is a very large, um, and, and we're not measuring it in, in pages, although it's somewhere in the upper 80s. Um, very large and complex bill that invited tons of disparate testimony. And those of us who understand testimony knows that some say the sun rises in the east, but others say it rises in the west. And that was certainly the case with this bill. It was up to your committee to discover the best path forward for moving this legislation um, through this body and through the, through the next body and um, across the governor's desk with a favorable um, nod. If all we get is a nod, that'd be okay. <laughs> um, and so that brings me to a very graphic moment. We, we, all of us in this room, and maybe the entire body, I'm not sure, have gotten an email very recently from a highly respected um, individual who has served on district commissions and, um, and, and, and served as chair um, has been involved, I believe, with the former um, Natural Resources Board of a different iteration, and is very qualified. He essentially asked, and I'm betting you're going to get more emails that support this, that you throw this baby out with the bathwater. And we're here to say today that primary concern, the, the gorilla that's really driving this was a substantial part of the public participation that says our district commissions are doing just fine, thank you very much, and don't create this new bureaucracy. And that's going to be the, the, the nut of, of his his concerns, although he has many, and, and others, I'm sure. Your committee decided to move this bill forward with what Carrie described, which does create the new NRB, and we think it may be the best path forward to get this legislation moved, again, through all bodies. Um, and, and so therefore, um, we ask you to support the bill we have other committees that are looking at this bill. Currently, um, our Ways and Means Committee, by, by rule, um, and likely the Government Office Committee, and most certainly Appropriations. Um, if you've got detailed questions about the concerns you're getting from, from your constituents, um, take them, take them to, to us in the committee. And by the way, um, our chair wanted to be here, but She's got an x-ray moment this morning and could not. <laughs> All right, so as you heard, uh, we will be uh, getting materials out to you uh, in addition to the ones that you got over the weekend. And um, this bill has a couple more stops to make. Uh, but do we have any questions on what you just heard, Representative Tram? Um, can you define residential development over 2,000 feet? Is that a house? Is it a barn? Is it a sugar house? 
what is the contemplation on that? There is a definition of development in the bill. It's the same definition. It's it's um, residential development. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Madam Pat. Uh, <clears throat> one, I, I have heard uh, a, a fair amount of uh, criticism. Certainly, like any jurisdiction, uh, excuse me, a legislative process, we began with a bill that contained many of the recommendations that were in that study committee report. And through the testimony over the, since um, much of last year and into this year, uh, we tried on a number of different models that, in our minds, can work in terms of providing a, a professional board that can result in a streamlined process and a, um, and a, a very transparent and uh, a process that would result in trans greater transparency uh, and consistency of decision making. And what we ended up resulting in is what you see before you in this bill. But, but know that we took a substantial number amount of testimony on this very question. All right, we have time for one more question. Representative Cooper. Constituencies, notwithstanding, I ended up on a list of people that are concerned about the slate industry in this other part of the state. Before I even took a chair here, there was conversation about that exemption going away, and now it seems to be firmly implanted. Can you do a rough draft of how we got to the process of strip mining in Vermont? Well, in the mid-1990s, there was an exemption made for the slate quarries uh, down in a, a portion of, of um, the state, I think known as the, the Slate Valley. And since then, there have been some concerns of landowners in, with respect to the impacts associated with some of the slate quarry. And we took testimony last year and sent a letter requesting some greater uh, uh, interventions, perhaps uh, communications between all parties involved, the municipalities, the businesses, the landowners, and unfortunately that's, that process never happened. What we did, at least as a first step forward, was to include a requirement to map those slate quarries that have been registered with the state. The state of, uh, of Vermont's Agency of Natural Resources maintains a, an atlas, a public-facing atlas, which is, uh, provides for mapping services of all landscape-related uh, features and, and infrastructure. And uh, we, uh, our first step was to include the mapping of the, slip, the registered slate quarries. We really felt at this point in time it, 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 um, what, it wasn't the, um, the timing was not right to actually use Act 250 as a mechanism to try to create a, a Greater, greater attention towards uh, slate wars. Great, okay, so stay tuned for more information. Like we said, this still has a couple more stops to make. If you have any other uh, questions, please find down a member of the committee. Don't touch that dial. <laughs> All right, next up we have um, House Bill 610, uh, a bill that is currently